Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. I know everyone feels like they are in a conundrum because of our politics, but let's put politics aside and talk about my problems for a second because I am having a, a real dandy of a problem right now that uh, a, a solution is not evident. I don't know exactly what to do, and maybe you're going through the exact same thing right now. And that's the only thing at this moment that is holding me together, that you perhaps are also at a crossroads in your life with a challenge facing you that feels truly insurmountable. And uh, I've discussed it on the podcast. I've tapped around it on Jimmy Fela's radio show. I even dove into it a little bit Monday on the outnumbered couch, but it is still not settled. So I went to... Um, the gorgeous Victoria's Secret models and the handsome shirtless men who populate the Fox News radio cubicles right outside this incredible uh, world-renowned studio. And we've had the discussion. Uh, I, I, had, I had them vote. And their, many of their hearts are where my heart is right now. And I'm talking about the turkey and how to prepare it because I still don't know what to do. Yes, I have, I've cooked a turkey. I have helmed my own Thanksgiving several years. And uh, I'm very confident in my turkey roasting ability because of my mom's explicit instructions that she emailed me 20 years ago. And uh, ever since then, if I'm not at home with my mom, I feel good on my own with the bird. At least I used to until this year. So my whole idea was I finally found an incredible comprehensive recipe that gave me a good recipe for the brine, instructions for it, it's pretty easy, how to prepare and cook the bird. Uh, things were looking aces. So so here's here's that avenue. And and this is this is where my juicy heart is. You you take the bird, it's a 10 pound bird, there's seven of us. It's a, it's a nice selection of people, family, lovely, wonderful conversationalists. Everyone's down to play card games. Uh, no one's screwing around this year and everyone is taking part, making their own dish for Thanksgiving. So I will have a lot of emotional, physical and culinary support when I need it. So, you know, the bird you brine in water, Worcestershire sauce, which I don't have, so I'm gonna use gluten-free soy sauce. Uh, brown sugar, halved cloves of garlic, a quartered onion, and a bunch of salt and two gallons of water. So I will brine the bird for 24 hours because that's all I have. And then take the bird out, uh, let it sit air dry in the refrigerator for 12 hours. And then I was going to take this beautiful herbed butter recipe, which is basically just salt and chopped herbs. And then you sort of mash it together. You mash it on the bird. You mash it in the in between the skin and the, the juicy bird turkey meat. And I was feeling good about that process. And I watched the video. And I know I can make that happen. And I know that bird is going to be incredible because he will be slathered and bathed in butter. And maybe that's where we end this podcast. But maybe that's all I need to do. And of course, my mom always taught me like fresh rosemary, halved lemon, half orange, maybe an apple in the cavity. Never put stuffing in the cavity. And then you roast it, you know, up two hours because I believe it's 12 minutes a pound. Some say 15. I'm going to I'm gonna go back and check the math. Don't worry. I will. I have a, a turkey oven thermometer. It's fine. Everything's going to be fine. So that's where I want to go. But of course, I have the deep frying coalition, which is really fun because I grew up, I, I hate to admit this, but with a family of pyros. So the idea of lighting something on fire shouldn't be attractive to me, but in a way it is. So tomorrow I'm going to have a firefighter on to teach me exactly what to do with a deep fried turkey. I have a feeling he's going to say, don't deep fry the turkey. Part of me wants to because I, I love flirting with kitchen danger, even though we would do it outside. And I hear that the best tasting bird is the deep fried bird. So that's, you know, and you have some absolutists who were like, absolutely deep fry the turkey. If you want a delicious turkey, you deep fry the turkey. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm still going to do the wet brine. And, and that can be a game time decision because the deep fryer, the oil, all of it will be there. The oven will be there. The, the, oh. Then there's Emily Campagno's contingency. And Emily and her dad, John, are adherents of the high heat short roast where they go 500 degrees and 
you know, John Campagno, Emily's dad, has you put chicken stock in the roasting pan. You slather it. It's very simple. You just slather it in olive oil and sage, ground sage and pepper, and that's it. And then you flip it over. So for a 10-pound bird, it would be 20 minutes, breast side down. Then you flip it over, boobies up, and you cook it for another 20 minutes. So if you're having like a spontaneous Thanksgiving and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not alone. That sounds great. For me, that terrifies me because I've never cooked with the oven that I'm going to use. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. The slow roast, I feel pretty good about it because, you know, worst case, you you leave it in there for an extra hour. Everyone's fine. We have plenty of appetizers and the high noons and surf sides. No one is going to suffer. Okay, so, and, and by the way, the, the cocktail that I served Brenberg a few weeks ago with the Topo Chico ginger beer, uh, the cranberry, a little bit of St. Germain, and Kettle One, that is what will be served as uh, the Thanksgiving cocktail if people so desire. Some will, some won't, that's fine. Um, anyhow, I'm, I'm terrified about the, the high temp short roast version. Uh, Emily swears by it. She said she will never cook another turkey or piece of fowl any other way ever again. John Campagno, who is a phenomenal cook. I've tasted his food. I've sipped his wine. I've taken in his vibe. And uh, his winery, by the way, in Oregon is absolutely stunning. And I, I trust him. I trust him implicitly. Whenever I have a medical question, Emily immediately puts me on a text chain with her dad and he solves it. Uh, he's a man of action, and, you know, he, he served this country honorably. He's an incredible person, so you you understand where I'm coming from. So I went out to the cubicle, and three people said, absolutely do the herb butter slow roast. You're not going to go wrong, especially with such a small bird. It's not too big to cook. It's not too big to fail. And then, of course, you know, one of the sexy Victoria's Secret models was like, Deep fry it. That sounds like so much fun. I'm like, you know, the, the part of me that, that loves lighting stuff on fire is high-fiving her. <laughs> like, yes, let's get a little wild this Thanksgiving because you're flirting with danger and it's delicious. So it's like, how could you go wrong there? No one, no one voted with the Campagno method. And I know Emily's going to hear this and I'm going to get a lecture from her and her dad and probably Salmonella because something's going to go horribly wrong. Now I, I have to veer. I have to. I have to bring my blood pressure down. I have to do a little bit of dessert meditation because uh, the desserts are always my arena on Thanksgiving, no matter where I am. Historically, I've done the pumpkin spice layer cake. Not doing that this year. I'm delegating. The, but we're going to do pumpkin cupcakes. They will be pumpkin spice cupcakes, and uh, my younger daughter will frost them with beautiful cream cheese frosting. Uh, she is an incredible artist and she has a, a beautiful touch with pastries. So she's going to do that. Um, the other daughter, of course, is going to make mac and cheese. I've got the Brussels sprouts covered. I'm going to do a Dutch apple pie because everyone loves the crumbly sweet topping. I feel so my family motto from my dad's side, they always said, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And nothing is more reflective of that motto than Thanksgiving desserts. So it's going to be a Dutch apple pie with homemade caramel sauce. I can't believe I said it like that because I always say caramel. I feel like I've violated my roots. And um, some beautiful Van Leeuwen vanilla bean ice cream. Yum, 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 yum. And then, of course, Indian pudding because my baby daddy is uh, from Plymouth, Massachusetts. He's not going to be there, but his children, his spawn, will be there. And this recipe came over on Mayflower, too. And it is basically gingerbread pudding that takes a while to make, but it is so satisfying and delicious. It is, it is cornmeal, sugar, eggs, butter, and molasses. And it is fantastic and absolutely worth the time it takes uh, because it is the most authentic dessert I've ever had. It screams Thanksgiving. And, and so between those three things, man, I think that's all we're doing for dessert. I am not going to do a sweet potato pie at the last minute. I refuse because we're having a sweet potato casserole with dinner that has the marshmallows and the pecans and the brown sugar and everything else. And uh, the green bean casserole with the fried onions on top. Very hard to find this year because uh, Whole Foods did not make gluten-free fried onions and I didn't have a chance to go to Trader Joe's. And uh, we'll also have gluten-free stuffing and homemade cornbread muffins. 
Oh, my garden. Yes, everyone's guts will feel better because it is all gluten-free. Don't uh, forget to remind me to bring some ouzo so everyone has a little digestif at the end. All right, we'll, we'll speak again tomorrow. I'll see if the conundrum is settled. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy.